Alrighty, so I'm here with Ravi Barrow from OxyCool, founder and CEO. Uh, definitely the shiniest, brightest, coolest looking thing that I've seen so far. But from the solar coaster's perspective, obviously there's a thermal conversation happening here. We're excited about thermal. That's one of the things that we explore all the time. So Ravi, please uh, tell us about yourself and who you are and what you do. So I'm Ravi, the founder and CEO of OxyCool. I'm a former merchant mariner. And I've traveled to 120 countries, and when I'm asked the question, which is your favorite place in the world, my answer is Hawaii. Mine too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I love Hawaii, and I think at Hawaii you need technologies like us more than other places because of the cleanliness that we bring in to your island, which is enormous, excellent, very clean. This technology is as clean as your island is what I like to say. So regular air conditioning uses a harmful chemical-based refrigerant used to be free on CFC, which ironically just had its last sale on 31st December 2019, five days ago. And this is the same day that symbolically we produce this unit. So home cool or air conditioner with no ref chemical based refrigerant was born on the same day that Freon was eradicated. So I, I didn't realize that. So Freon was eradicated uh, as, of the, as 2019, the last day of 2019, did I hear that correctly? It was December 2019. Is that a, a national or a global initiative? It's for US. For US? Yes. So all production was stopped and sale was stopped. There is going to be some black market, which people believe, but obviously that also won't last for a long time. Very interesting. So what is the, uh, what is the replacing technology that's in market right now? If, that, if Freon has been effectively outlawed domestically, what is out there now? And then, and then let's talk about your technology too. So Freon, world thought that Freon had left 20 years ago, but that really didn't happen. It was still being sold in lesser and lesser quantities, and the final sale happened now. And for the longest time now we have HFC, which is a potent greenhouse gas that is being sold as a refrigerant in your homes. And again, regulations are being placed that that needs to go as well. But another solution that will come in, my, our worry is that another chemical-based refrigerant will come in that the world will think is good for the planet and then eventually we'll say, lo behold, it's not a good thing. So what we have over here is there is, there, we only have the four natural elements of earth. Earth, water, air, and fire. That's all we have over here. So the best way we think that to do things is go back to as nature designed things. And nature designed the four elements. You can't go wrong with that. So in this particular box, every single thing in this box, other than some of the fans that we have, everything of our inner guts is recyclable. We use the purest water that you can find on the planet. And when the, the system is done at its end of the life, you take that water that will still remain the purest water on the planet. So the way it works is we use a standard air conditioner has a compressor that does most of the work. The compressor is a pump that pulls the refrigerant from one side, it pushes into another side. That's the much of the work. They are electrically driven, they cause a burden on the electrical grid and they fail oftentimes, especially they fail on the days when you most need air conditioning on a hot summer day. In our case, we have no compressor, so how do we move the refrigerant, which is water around, is water is a polar molecule. Hydrogen and oxygen, they exhibit different charge. Oxygen is highly electronegative. We use a molecular sieve, which is a synthetic mineral made of aluma silicate. Aluma silicate is clay, so it's a very benign mineral, but it's a very sophisticated mineral, which has nanopores. So we have a nanopore in this, many nanopores, that are sized to water molecule, but that nanopore also has sodium impregnation. Sodium is highly electropositive. So when it sees water with oxygen, which is electronegative, it has an affinity for it. The water molecule goes and lodges inside the pore. And that's how the pull happens. Now the beauty of the molecular sieve is that if you apply heat to it, it vibrates the pore and ejects the molecule out. So you can pull by molecular charge, which never goes away, and you can push by heat, so heat becomes your energy source. So we are starting with natural gas as an energy source right now, and what this does is it takes the load from the electrical grid and we transfer it, transfers it to natural gas, which is soon becoming a clean fuel of choice. And in the future, as soon as hydrogen comes into place, we will be ready for hydrogen. So we'll become entirely carbon free. There is no other air conditioning technology on the planet that can give you carbon free air conditioning entirely. So in the future, 
picture you'll electrolyze water, create some hydrogen, burn the hydrogen, and then separate. So we won't go into generating hydrogen because there are a lot of other, like Los Angeles yeah. is going into that. Right. Hydrogen. But we think hydrogen will get piped to your home from right. the same lines which are natural gas. Initially, it will happen with some form of a mixture, yeah. but with the low you know, mixture of hydrogen and methane, but eventually the entire hydrogen could take over. Wow, there is a lot going on there. This is really exciting stuff. So, okay, so does this unit itself right here that we're seeing, there's a, a large, it's gotta be a meter and a half uh, square. Four feet by four feet. Okay, so does this unit here cool uh, what type of space? So this is meant for an average US home, 2,500 to 3,000 square feet. And this will have four of those in-house units. So there are a variety of ways you could do this. This sits outside your home. This unit is running right now and it's amazingly silent. You can't even hear it. That unit is very silent. Now, if you're very in an existing home and you wanted to make use of your current ducts, then you could we could give you a configuration for that. So this sits on your outside your home and in your ducts, in your attic or in your basement, we could give you heat exchangers for that. So this is a multi-head ductless split, natural gas base, free on free, via water, air conditioning system for a 2,500 plus square foot home. Exactly, very well, very well put. Very exciting stuff. So let's uh, let's let's think a little bit about the longevity and the costing. How does something like this work? If I I have a, by the way, does it work with propane? It will work on propane as well. On diesel, we don't want to go to the diesel and other things, but that in, in introduces a little bit of unclean kind of behavior. But propane and natural gas are cleaner fuels, so we like to stick to that. So what is, how does this compare from an energy perspective for the current generation of, let's say, a Daikin or a, uh, or a Mitsubishi or whatever, a, a ductless split multi-head system? Uh, how does this, what, what's that energy relationship? Is it basically a similar energy uh, input in kilowatt hours if you use that metric? or is it different? So you cannot really use, because this does work in a very different manner, you can't take the same metrics and apply to it. So the best way to equalize things is to go to back to what is the end cost to the consumer. We think everything eventually equalizes. From an end cost to consumer basis, depending on which geography you live in and what your electrical price is and your natural gas price, we think on an average this would be 25 to 30% cheaper than running an electrical driven air conditioner. The other beauty is it has very few moving parts. Inner guts, probably none, other than some small valves that we have. That means there are no failures we expect, like a compressor failing. So your maintenance cost will be very lower than a standard thing. Longevity-wise, this is supposed to last for a very long time. It's a made in America, stainless steel based system, under vacuum. There is no free oxygen molecule inside there, other than the oxygen in the water. So it won't inside rust at all. So we think it's going to last for a very long time. I'm learning more and more that the uh, ability to separate from the elements is a huge factor in longevity. So is, is this a material science solution uh, versus a mechanical solution? Or is that, can I say that? You know, it's, a, it's a both, because anytime you have engineering, mechanical comes into play. Initial invention, when I made the invention joint with the US Navy, so this was a joint invention with the US Navy. US Navy had been working on something for 10 years. They had not realized the potential of this technology, so I teamed up with them. I went as a one-man show to them. I realized the potential. I took over the rights from them, and then I came up with my first invention in life, which was joined with the US Navy on NAVER in particular, and ended up winning the first inaugural award from that very historic Paddington River Naval Air Station on Ockady. And that's when I said, okay, let me take it to other applications. That invention was, I believe, a small part of everything. Because then it has taken many years of engineering to bring the product where we can now take it to market. Anytime you have a product, engineered product, there's a lot to be considered. Energy consumption, how are you going to integrate it? What is the weight? What is the volume? Just the whole thing, how are you going to produce it? Now we have a factory already in Melbourne, Pennsylvania. This is a made in America unit, as I said. We have a clean room. This gets built in a very clean room factory. So we have lasers, robots, cleaning machines, and all that. Final assembly does in a, gets done in a created clean room. So if you look at the factory, you'll fall in love with this, saying, I want, now you like the unit, you have to see the factory, and say, now I want it, because it's made in such a clean manner.
There's a lot of great value propositions here and I'm starting to settle in and understand the core value propositions. But you said there's an energy or rather a cost savings of about 30% uh, in comparing current market leaders. Uh, and then of course you're working with a clean uh, system that doesn't pollute, doesn't create GHGs, greenhouse gases, whole new solution. Uh, and then also it's made in America, which is uh, you know, really valuable for a, a lot of people's perspectives when they're, when they're making those purchasing decisions. So I'm excited to learn more. Where can we see this? Where can we buy this? Is this available? When will it be available? So on 10th January at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can go on Oxygold website and there's a link for pre-order. You can go and be one of the first ones to go and place a refundable $100 deposit, and we believe this is going to create history. So 10,000 years later, this technology is going to stand, and if you can say you were the serial number one owner of OxyCool, that'll be something to own, I would he knows, think. He knows who he's talking to, right? He's like, oh, this guy's gonna do it. Okay. Very good, well, thank you so much, Ravi uh, Barrow, OxyCool. Uh, a very um, you know, amazing technology. I'm really glad we met you. Thank you. And thank you all of you listening in. Please go to oxygold.com and place your pre-orders. All right. Aloha. Aloha.